F K transform basically is a two-dimensional Fourier transform. One Fourier transform is uh, with respect to the it's transformed with respect to the time. Another one is uh, the transform uh, with 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 respect to the space. So that's two-dimensional. The frequency spectrum will be also two-dimensional. So one axis is a temporal frequency, another axis is uh, the spatial frequency. We call the K here, F and the K. So this is called the FK spectrum, right? And uh, I said here, because you do the transform based on the uh, based on the, the pattern in the FK domain, <clears throat> you can find out the dip or inverse dip called the velocity. So now I try to explain this, why the dip and the, the velocity uh, are related in the FK domain. Right. If you assume your subsequent, you have a signal travel in this direction, actually direction, this direction, from you have an angle here, alpha, right? If this wave actual energy tra traveling uh, project to the surface, to the space direction, we could, well, just for the community, we use a vertical axis at time, but the horizontal axis we call it a spe spatial coordinate, right? If you project this one to the here, you can see if we draw a triangle here, this angle alpha, this another angle here, right? Same, same alpha, and they have access here. I have a, one, a, a triangle, and the, the wavelengths of this we call lambda, if we project to the surface, what we become of lambda divided by sine alpha. So basically, this angle, uh, this, this length, which is lambda, Divide uh, over this becomes sine alpha, right? That's easy. Okay. And the lambda is related to the velocity. Lambda means wavelength. How many wavelengths per second means the velocity, right? The velocity here, velocity, you have this formula here. So the if we travel in this direction, the velocity is V. And the apparent velocity you see from the horizontal direction will be V divided by sine alpha. This formula I think you learned from a high school level. Snare's law. You understand? Snare's law? Yeah? You must learn this. Velocity divided by sine alpha. Okay. You can see here we call the Vx. Vx. Right? This actually is horizontal direction, apparent velocity. Basically, this is the true velocity project to the horizontal direction, right? Okay, now, the V here in the FK domain is F divided by K. F divided by K, right? If you Sometimes you easily confuse, you know, which one's F. The diffraction here, I know it's V uh, equal to F and the K. Sometimes you confuse it. It's a K on the top or F on the top, right? So F over K or K over F, easy to. You just remember the physical units. Velocity means how many meter per second, right? What is frequency here? It's a, how many circles per second. So second, one over second, so second here. What's K here? How many circles per meter? You can see. So the, now you can, if we check the left-hand side, right-hand side, as I said, one stage, I said, you need one of the principle, you need to check the physical units. Left-hand side equal to right-hand side, right? Left-hand side is a meter per second. Right-hand side also a meter per second, you see that? So you, now you do not even remember the formula, but you know, okay. V equal to F and K, but which one to the top, you know, easy. Just check the physical units. I'll show you some uh, examples. 
On the top, we have six panels here. Each panel we have a, a the frequency, the uh, the constant frequency here, twelve hertz, twelve hertz cosine function, twelve hertz vertically. Horizontally, horizontally, how many minutes per second? Be talking about dipping angle, right? Here, every trace, if you increase one trace, increase one trace, the time shift zero, so it's zero. Here, between every trace, your time increases by 15 milliseconds. So this uh, dipping angle. So dipping, it means how many milliseconds per trace here? That's dipping. So zero, three, six, nine gradually increased, All right? That's your ideal uh, signals in the time, what cost time, horizontal X in time and the space domain. After the two dimensional Fourier transform, you end up frequency and the wave number, right? This is called tempo frequency. This is called a special frequency. Right. Okay. Let's see. For this one, your time frequency, it I said is twelve hertz. So it's here. Okay. Special frequency because because each the trace uh, the dipping here is zero. Dipping here is zero. So in the horizontal axis. You have no any time a time and no no uh, uh, shift, so that's zero. So k is zero. Okay, for the first panel frequency f twelve k zero. For second panel, you have a three millisecond per trace dipping angle. Again, frequency here. It's 12 hertz, but the wave number now is no longer zero. Zero is in the middle, okay, from positive 20 to negative 20. Positive 20 to negative 20. So it's no longer zero, shifted to three here. Right? So, so also for the final one here, horizontal uh, vertical axis is frequency is 12 and a half hertz, uh, 12, 12 hertz here. But the horizontal axis is 15, 15 so-called per kilometer, right? So this is a uh, how many traces? Uh, 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 15 millisecond per trace, dipping angle. Okay. So you can see FK FK spectrum represents the dipping angle of a time x space event, right? That's one and one corresponding uh, to each other. That's 12 hertz. Let's see, 24 hertz. Again, horizontally, your, uh, the dipping angle increase from 0, 3, 6, up, up to 12 and 15. In the time frequency spectrum, in the, in the frequency and the, and the webinar spectrum, vertically now 24 hertz. So you have a 24 hertz here. And uh, horizontally, the web number from zero, here three, here six, until here 15. See that? So, okay. In the time X domain, you have a dipping events and the dipping dipping angle here, how many milliseconds per trace. After Fourier transform, after the two dimension of Fourier transform, you can find out the, the dots from, uh, from the FK spectrum. So this uh, vertical axis here give you the frequency, which is temporal frequency, horizontal axis give you the, um, uh, give you the, how many, so, uh, the deep, how many milliseconds per trace, okay, now. This diagram also helps you why we do need a negative one. We have a positive 
web number, but also negative web number. Right. We, we said DP angle towards this way, positive dipping, which means each trace, your time shift by positive 15 millisecond. But if we dip in that way, so each, each time, some, each trace, uh, the dipping will increase by negative or decrease by 15 millisecond, right? Increase by negative. So you have a negative web number, you can see, right? This is necessary for us. You, we should not only, only have positive frequency uh, web number, but our negative, right? So the negative positive here on actually give you the direction of dipping angle. Positive. Why is it positive? Because from here to here, if this time access from zero to up here, right? So next trace is increased by 15 milliseconds. That's positive. If next trace is decreased by 15, it will go that way. So in the web number domain, you will become negative web number, right? So the positive negative uh, means the direction of dipping in this uh, diagram here. That was for per periodic uh, events, you know, with a constant dipping. But now I show you an uh, example here for no events or multiple events, but both have a same dipping angle, what, what, what it looks like in the FK domain. So the first panel here, time and the space, Data x, the, uh, the, uh, the interval here is trace interval is 50 meter. The next web number will be 10 here, right? Because one over two that x. Yeah, one over two that t, remember? F next equal to one over two that t, but here k next equal to one over two that x. That x uh, 50, one means one kilometer, okay? One, so that 1,000 divided by 100 is 10. So this is ne negative. Uh, next, the next web number, negative positive. Okay, now, in event, after two dimensional Fourier transform in the F, vertical axis from zero to uh, 128 hertz, right? You can see the events here. Okay, so single dipping event here becomes uh, a, in the web number domain becomes also a dipping event, but a different web number, different web number. Okay, because this this thing here you have. A, let me let me go back to here. The difference between. Uh, next argument is one. Here we are talking about, talking about single frequency. Single frequency. So that means I said, for example, 24 hertz, single frequency. Right? But for reality, in the reality, your, each waveform wave here have a, a series frequency, right? Have a range of frequencies. Okay. So, so instead of a single dot, on the single frequency, but you have a multiple frequencies. Actually, frequency this is from uh, like a 10 hertz to 50 hertz, something. Yeah, this is why this becomes a, a line here instead of a dots. If it's only single dots, means only single frequency. In the previous uh, two two slides here, right? The single frequency is 12 hertz. That is 24 hertz. But this one you have a the range of frequency, so you have a dipping event here, okay? Nevertheless, this dipping angle reflects this dipping angle here, okay? But the frequency range depends on your actual frequency in your, in your signal, right? That's for single events, but for multiple events, all here, for example, you have six of them, you can see they're almost identical to this, right? Also have a linear event, so that means after Fourier transform, after two dimensional Fourier transform, those come to together as a single event in the FK domain. That's 
that's property where simplify your processing. For example, we learned before like a multiple. Multiple means you have a one arrival and they have periodical arrivals, right? But they have a almost same dipping angle. That means in the FX domain that becomes uh, concentrated energy here, right? And then it somehow processes away. Okay. That's a single dip. Any dip here in a part in a frequency web number domain should go cross the origin here, go cross zero here, zero hertz zero frequency. All of this will go to here. If we do the extension, the intersection time, intersection point will be zero. Zero web number, zero uh, frequency, always. Right, okay. To, to understand that one, uh, the concept, you can see this is an example here, have a dipping zero degree, five degree, every, every of this uh, five degree incrementation here. Uh, 245, 245, after flash transform, after two dimensional flash transform, the horizontal one, zero dipping here, becomes, because K is zero, right? K is zero. So that means vertical. Horizontal event becomes a vertical. Vertical really means K is zero. We have no dipping, right? And then gradually, gradually, you have an increased dipping angle. But uh, all of those were go cross the origin here, zero point. Okay. The dipping event in the time space domain after the two dimension Fourier transform becomes a dipping event in the FK domain. Okay. The dipping in the time domain is the same as the dip in the two-dimensional spectrum domain, FK domain, by this formula. Dipping in the time domain we call the every, uh, how many milliseconds per trace of interval, data, the trace interval, data x, data, data x, okay? So data t over data x equal to k to f. So K to F. Okay, how to put, now it's slightly confusing. You know, before I said F on the top, K on the bottom, right? When we talk about velocity, but here we talk about dipping K on the top of F. Again, you can easily to check by uh, checking the, uh, verify, uh, you can easily verify by checking the physical unit. On left hand side, it's a millisecond over meter, which is a inverse velocity, right? So on the right hand side, on the top is one over meter, on the bottom one over uh, second. So that means in total it becomes second over meter, right? So physical units same, right? And uh, all events, linear events in the two time in the free transform domain will go close, go go past the origin. Uh, uh, origin point, which original po uh, the origin point, which is a uh, k equals zero. Just just as show here, all the dipping events must go to zero here. Okay. So the this is the summary in the uh, over the previous slide. So dipping means how many millisecond per trace. Actually, that means k over f. K means how many circles per trace and the frequency how many circles per second. If we cancel these circles, you can end up KF means how many second per trace, isn't it? Of course, when we talk about milliseconds, so we time 1000 here. If we're talking about a second, we do not do 1000 here. When we talk about hertz, actually it's Second here is hertz, right? But here's millisecond with type one thousand. One thousand means this here second, here's millisecond. Oh, it's not, nothing really uh, serious. E, okay. So if we reorganize this formula, so K here, 
multiplied by 1000 equal to the dip multiplied by frequency. This is why I said for your seismic data, for seismic events, you no longer have a single dots in the FK domain. You have a linear event here. Why? Because your signal, your signal has a range of frequencies. A range of frequency. So in the K do, in the FK domain, the, you will end up dip multiplied by frequency. So this is why you have a line here. It's based on this formula. Okay. So this is the trans. As I repeat, you have no longer a dot, no longer a single isolated point in your FK domain, but you have a, a line, a linear event here. Depends on the linearly depend on the frequency. So this is a linear event. <clears throat> right, summarize that. We can in the frequency F and uh, web number domain, we can easily separate the different events according to the dip, according to the dip, right? And dip and the velocity, it's inverse, right? Inverse velocity, we have a, another terminology called a slowness, slow, slowness. Okay. So it does not depend on the location data because we, we showed the example if I have a single events, if I have six events, but they're all Become a single linear event in FK domain. So you do, do does not the result does not depend on where you were, the, the, the position. Okay. That's easy for us for the processing in the FK domain. So based on the dip or based on the velocity, we can do the filtering. So that's the thing here. That was FK transform with uh, the dip, the relationship between FK. Uh, transform and the deeper. Now we're talking about FK transform and the velocity, right? So straight line in the XT domain becomes another straight line. The straight line here, time, horizon access. So the dip we, we showed before is uh, how many, uh, the trace spacing divided by velocity. And then now velocity is uh, the trace space divided dip. This is the relationship, okay? So the straight uh, events in the time domain, time x domain becomes the velo straight uh, velocity event in the in the uh, FK domain. I have the same issue in the one dimensional Fourier transform is called Ellison issue. Now let's see in the two dimensional how the Ellison uh, looks like. <sighs> okay, for example, uh, first of all, special Ellison, we're talking about traces. You have a one CMT gator, consists of a number of traces, right? Each individual trace is in a special location. So the traces is a sampled, sampled uh, information from a continuous variation along space, right? So this, so you have a sampling in the space, which is a data X or offset difference, right? In the time domain, we have a next row, which is a one over two delta T. In the space domain, we also follow the same rule, but uh, instead of delta t, you use the delta x, so one over that two delta x. And uh, you uh, try to avoid uh, any editing issue, means any high frequency, uh, frequency uh, high frequency or high wave number information be destroyed. You should have enough, a uh, small enough. Uh, Trace interval. That's actually leads to the acquisition in the field. They sh you should think about, right? So the the simple way is to remember that formula is uh, each wavelength within the, each wavelength should at least have two traces. Otherwise, you have a special aliasing. 
If we remember the diagram, right? I guess, let me let me repeat the diagram. I just like I stopped too late. You know, if we want, I uh, can't remember exactly the the parameter. I, I think a dt equal to sixteen or something, sixteen or something, right? The maximum dip based on the next frequency. So if for dt higher than 16, that means you cannot properly recover or represent this uh, cosine function, right? That's the problem. And uh, this is everything. And, uh, in, uh, in, and uh, we also showed the example of this. Right, this is everything. So suppose the all the three uh, arrows should go to the same uh, so-called clockwise, right? But it looks like a, some clockwise, some anti-clockwise, right? Just because the sampling in the world, in time, right? The same principle should apply to the special direction, to the data x. Next frequency, we saw this diagram, uh, we saw this formulation before. So, this actually, this formula is very simple, but very important from acquisition, from processing, almost every step. You just, uh, just like you have five fingers over your head, right? You always remember that. Okay, but you just uh, do not necessarily, do not necessarily uh, uh, repeat it, uh, emphasize, but you always you consider. In the space domain, have an identical formula. So next the VAM number equal to one with that x, right? And the, the relationship between the time space domain deep and uh, the deep in, in the FK domain is this. So in the time domain, <clears throat> delta t over delta x equal to the FK domain k over f. Okay, well, okay, so this in terms of units, the inverse of uh, velocity is called a dip, right? So if we do the up, uh, another way, you have a uh, uh, velocity. All right, it's just simply you multiply f to both sides, you end up this formula, k equal to f multiplied by dip. This is what I, this is what I said before. Any Linear events in the time space domain becomes a linear events in the FK domain. That's why, because your signal is not a single frequency, right? Your signal has a, a range of frequencies. So in the time in the FK domain, you have a deeper here, but a multiplier by frequency. So spread spread over frequency range. That's why, okay? This formula here. This just give you the way to understand why a linear events in the time space domain becomes a linear event in the FK domain. Because deep is constant, but F is not single value, right? It's a variable. That was the uh, next frequency. So when you do the discussion, you should consider anything less than one over two delta k. So the sampling principle will be two uh, uh, will be that x less or equal to one over two k maximum. Maximum means your maximum web number in your data. You should consider that. Uh, just just uh, uh, multiply by that x both sides. Okay. If not, straightforward the data are at least, which means something, some high wave number energy will shift to folder to wrong place. But in the two dimensional, you have a different behavior like uh, from a first, uh, one dimensional, okay? Frequency will appear in the wrong place and the dip appear in also incorrect and uh, because it's already at least, you have no chance whatsoever to recover the original 
right? Once the data is destroyed, you cannot fully recover. So, so you must be very careful. Let's show you an example here that about uh, the editing issue. Here we have a time space x t x domain, one seismic signal, and the trace interval that x equal to 25, right? After two dimensional Fourier transform, you get you have a FK spectrum. This is a frequency access, this is a wave, wave number access, negative wave number, positive wave number, right? So this events here, zero here, frequency zero here. So any linear events will go past this origin point. Okay. Well, sometimes uh, from a high frequency to lower frequency, but here is from zero to high frequency. But you can see time zero is here, a frequency zero here. Okay. So always pass on the here. Right. The next one, your sample interval increased by two. So it's doubled, that x become 50. Again, you have a frequency, you have a number. Because that x is doubled, your next, uh, next wave number is halved, right? So it was 0 0.02, but now it becomes 0 0.01, see that? Okay. So, but uh, the linear events still here, pass to the zero event. Why not exactly pass? Because the lowest frequency here, you have no energy in the, in, in the, in the signal. This is nothing to do with FK, but uh, because the original, uh, the frequency spectrum of original signal here is between this frequency to this frequency, okay? But uh, this trend here, the dipping depends on this dip, dip angle. Right. 25, 50, still okay, because they're smaller than the, the next uh, sample interval. And now, increase. Further doubled, that x beyond 100. Because that x beyond 100, here at 0 0.05, the next web number, it was 0 0.01, and now, is here, half right. Actually, in your data, you do have signal higher than 0 0.005. So what this part goes? This part here. It was here, now go to here. Right? Okay, think about from here to here, from 0 to pi. Think about here, from 0 to negative pi. So you can think about like a 2-pi circle. You think about this this uh, this uh, profile like a cylindrical cylindrical uh, cylindrical image. You have a two pi circle. So basically, after two pi, after pi, this one go to another side. See that? This is a wrap around. That's it's a, another type of wrap around, but in the in the web number access in the web number access, yeah. This part actually was here, the second part of here, but now go to there, all right? We saw this uh, so-called wrapper on it before in the one dimension, all right? If we, this part overlap with this, right? You we have a, just a, we call it list, right? At least overlap, actually same thing, but one's talking about time domain, one talking about freedom domain, okay? We just show the same thing. So anyway, if we have a enough separation between these two, we do not have an overlap. Or this part of the energy could be properly represented, right? So we need a padding zero, also enough sampling, uh, enough, a small enough sampling interval. As, as just I said, you have a, uh, web numbers higher than uh, your next web number that will be go to another side just like a cylindrical, a cylindrical coordinate here you have just a two two pi face uh, wrap around it. from here go to there okay that's called a wrap, uh, wrap around so that's called a special energy
So in this case, for this type of frequency, that means the special anything here not only depends on depend on the special sample interval, but also depends on the frequency in your signal. Why is that? Let's go back to this formula. See here, the K is not only depend on the dipping angle, not only depends on the data X, but also depends on the frequency in your data. You see that? Okay. So just in the two dimensional, the uh, FK spectrum, the Edison issue is slightly complicated than the one dimensional. Edison. In the one dimensional, the Edison is caused by data T, not good enough. But in the two dimensional, it's caused by data X, but also related to the F. Okay. For example, if in your original signal, you do not have anything more than 50 hertz, right? More than 50 hertz, you have no problem. You see that. So now you can see, actually, you try to somehow get rid of a high frequency, you can avoid the special Edison issue. So that's actually, we, some, actually we call the frequency special Edison issue. That's why we call that, okay? What I try to emphasize, if we do not have high frequency components in your signal, you can somehow use that X, in this case, equal to 100 together, right? Now let's see what's the Edison issue on your seismic section. How do you recognize they are at least or not? We saw this one here. I said it's Alice because this one could here and this go back in the same position. You can see that and the same chain. So you can see this Alice. Okay. This one, if for 20 hertz only, for 20 hertz only, you only have single dots, right? So everything issue is caused by the frequency range. If you only have a 20 hertz, you have no problem, okay? Now, if you have a 40 hertz, because 40 hertz, all, almost okay, because, because of the numerical calculation, you have a sort, sort of a energy leakage for neighboring frequencies. You can see some energy here, but still okay, because it starts from 50 hertz, right? There's a 40 hertz here. Now, for 60 hertz, it is edited now because it should be here now. But uh, this is already higher than the next wave number. That's folding to here. That's edited. So everything it depends on the frequency. Edison, special Edison depends on the frequency. Can you see that? Okay. <clears throat> or 80 hertz further. Okay, now, that's in the FK domain. In the time-space domain, what Edison means, really means. You can, Edison really means, you, here you have an event here. That's what you want. It's a dipping event, same as this, but it's 80 hertz, right? Same dipping angle, but frequency instead of a 20 hertz, now it's a 80 hertz. That's in your ideal situation. However, from the seismic profile Tx here, you can see you have a coherent this way, you can see that? Coherent in this way. So this is appear as a different dipping. Frequency is still 80 hertz, same 80 hertz, no problem. But the dipping angle, instead of a positive dip here, but now becomes a dipping angle this way. So negative dip here, right? So everything really means you're in the idea such where you, you see the trend in the one direction, but in your because computer doesn't know right, which way you want to go. They have a very strong correlation along the this direction, you see that? That's the Edison issue, okay? In your cycle profile, if we see from different angle, you can see that 
very a very good correlation. That's very that's easy. If you recall, when I show you the short together of a land seismic acquisition, I said that this a ground row. Why? Because they have a so-called frequency dispersion, velocity dispersion. One of the one of the uh, one of the, uh, the feature is we call the Edison. Actually, they have a, not only followed the trend of a travel time, but also in the uh, different dipping angle, they also have a correlation. Just just look at this. Okay, so Edison means rather. This is the trend that you want, but they have actually trend here. Negative one. Okay, that's the same thing. 100, same thing. You still have a 80 hertz, but the dipping almost flat here. You can see that almost next to zero. Oh, it's actually exact zero. Right? Now, if we increase the trace set space, uh, instead of 25 meter, no, become 50 meter. What happens? Right? Increases the trace uh, space means we drop, for example, we drop every second trace. That's what we see before. We call we call everything issue, right? Everything issue in the two dimensional domain we call the wrap around. So the highest uh, web number components actually wrap around to the to the negative uh, web number domain, uh, just a wrap around. So that's the issue. But how we do that? If we do really want drop a second trace, what how we do? We need so called anti aliasing field. We'll see later. What is anti aliasing field later? Okay. So I in the ideal situation, you have a uh, energy here. You have energy here. You also have energy here. But if you sampling rate, OK, this is the next k, this is the next and uh, negative next k. But if we drop every second trace, your data x becomes doubled. Your k next becomes half. So instead of here, it becomes half. So you effectively have this fk spectrum. So any energy outside of the next frequency will be wrapped around to wrong place. Okay, that's one here, but this one will be wrapped around, go to there, go to here, go to down here. Okay, will be to go to here. And that this part is slightly, you have some uh, blue here, also wrap around, go to another side, go to here, you can see it. So that's the sampling issue with the uh, Edison. In so trans, how we do that if we really want, really want to uh, resampling in the space that domain. Now, if we have too many trays, you want to drop a second trace. What do we do? What do you, you need? Uh, use uh, spatial in the in the spatial direction. Use a like high cut field. You get rid of high frequency, high web number before you do the resampling. Okay. So this you can do that. Also, you can do that in the FK domain, which means you can also get rid of high frequency. So you can cut off high frequency and the high web number before you do the resampling. Right? Actually, most commonly in the practice, we actually do the opposite way. In the field, maybe we have, a, say, data x equals 50, but in, for the calculation, for the, for the processing and the imaging, we may do the trace or short interpret, interpreta, uh, interpretation. Right? Interpretation to maybe generate every second shot or every second trace in between two traces. Right. So you reduce sample interval by half. That's the way we do that. Right. But the interpretation is a nonlinear processing. Uh, I personally have a contribution to this field. If you have interest, I call the seismic trace interpretation in the FXY domain. So we're talking about 3D seismic data. 3D means you have a time access 
how after Fourier transform becomes F, and then you also have a horizontal x axis and the horizontal y axis. Okay, so three D cube. How to do the trace interpretation? And the many many processing and the imaging we do need have a, as I said, high enough uh, next frequency, next wave number. So this is very useful too. Uh, but this is a nonlinear field. I emphasize that. You can go, uh, if you're interested, you can have a, a look at this paper. Now, let's see anti aliasing which means we drop every second. I, I do not show you how to interpret because that's not in the field. And you know, it's slightly complicated. But then you, let's see how to do anti aliasing field. Right. This is the real data example F frequency. K, FK domain spectrum, right? Zero here, zero K, 100, next 100, and uh, that's the sample uh, in the frequency domain. So 125 hertz, which means delta T equal to four millisecond. This is the uh, short together or CMP together, but this is after AGC. Why I say after it? Because you can see the weak, the later arrival actually have strong enough energy. Also, before the first arrival, the background noise also boosts up, right? This AGC. AGC means every time window you have a the fixed scale, uh, energy scalar. So, right? All right. Now, in the FK domain, you can see this curve here. This curve actually represents represent the curve over here. So FK helps you to see, OK, actually, in the time space domain, we, we, we hardly see the reflections, but after free transform, you can see reflection very well. You see that? Because the transform is integration, right? Integration means summer, summer many points together. So somehow you enhance this uh, coherence energy, right? So you can see, this is why you do that, you do a uh, transform. Right, and then you see this straight linear events also have an energy here. So that's probably because of this, right? And this probably because of this. And the, this part, this part is aliased. This actually should be belongs to here, you see that? So it's already aliased, but this is anything higher than 60 hertz, right? Higher than 60 hertz. So what do you do if we want to to the resampling, you get rid of left hand side, get rid of right hand side a bit. You end up, if we do the resampling, you take every second in trace, the energy of this part be round per round to this side. Just a wrap around effect. So you can notice simply drop every second trace. That's maybe save your space, save your time for processing, but you cannot do that, right? Because you do that. But if you really want to do that, you need to do something called the anti alice field, which means you get rid of a high wave number, high wave number energy. You just basically put it just almost zero. Put it almost zero. You actually you also need to somehow do the uh, high frequency dipping, high frequency filter. High frequency filter, as we, saw, we said, we use a, a tapering, so you do not cut off straight away. You have a great taper, right? But this looks like uh, what, what this result is you do the filtering and then you, do, you have a, the result. This time you have a sec, uh, every, uh, every, every second trace. Uh, you drop every second trace based on this spectrum, and then you have this one. That means you do not have anything issue, right? anti aliasing really means before you drop, you try to drop every second trace, you just get rid of high web number, high web number energy, and uh, even high frequency energy. And then you do you can do the dropping, right? It's just the anti aliasing okay? So let's let's compare the two results before and after. 
you, you see almost identical, but the trace interval uh, becomes sparse, uh, becomes a, a sparse every second trace now, before and after. But uh, still, okay, you have a linear events here, linear, that's not created anything more. 